today's video is about Pedro Rodrigo's filio. I tried. <laughs> anyway, this story is definitely a very unique one. I have never heard of anything like that before. Let's get into the story and then you will know why. Pedro Rodrigo's Filho is one of Brazil's most prolific killers, but he was known to target mainly criminals and has been described as the real-life version of the fictional psychopath Dexter. The critically acclaimed TV series Dexter put audiences in a tricky situation. He was the awkward, bumbling, sociopathic protagonist that you rooted for, despite the fact that he was going around murdering people. That's what was so difficult and unnerving about the program because you wanted him to succeed, which meant more dead bodies. Well, if you were thinking Dexter was the work of fiction, you'd be wrong. Oh, so wrong. Philo was born on a farm in Santa Rita do Sapuki, South Minas Gerais, Brazil. He was born with his skull bruised as a result of his father kicking his mother's belly while she was pregnant during a fight. He claimed he wanted to kill for the first time at the age of 13. In a fight with an older cousin, he pushed the young man into a sugarcane press, almost killing him. At 14, he killed the deputy mayor of Santa Rita do Sapuki by shooting him in front of the city hall for having fired his father, a school guard then accused of stealing school lunch. He then killed a lookout who was suspected of being the actual thief. Philo took refuge in Melguidas Cruz's Greater Sao Paulo where he began robbing drug dens and killing traffickers. He met a traffic leader's widow, nicknamed Botina, and they began living together. Philo took on the duties of the deceased and was soon forced to eliminate some rivals, killing three ex cronies He lived there until Botina was executed by the police. Pedro escaped. He regrouped soldiers and set up his own business. In search of revenge for the murder of his companion, he tortured and killed several people trying to find who was responsible. The client, a former rival who had been betrayed by his ex-wife, received a visit from Pedro and four friends during a wedding party. They left a trail of seven dead and 16 wounded. At the time, Pedro wasn't even 18 years old. Yet. Still in Mogi, he executed his father in a city jail. His father had killed his mother with 21 machete blows. His son's revenge was cruel. In addition to 22 stab wounds, he ripped out his father's heart, chewed a part of it, and spit it out. Pedro was arrested for the first time on May 24, 1973, and was lived in prison for most of his adult years. It is said in the police records that he was once put on a muffler to be transported by the PM together with another prisoner, both handcuffed. But when they went to open the back of the car, the other prisoner was already dead. Pedro assumed responsibility for the crime, justifying it by claiming that his companion was a rapist. In 2003, although he was sentenced to 126 years imprisonment, he was to be released because Brazilian law prohibits anyone from spending more than 30 years behind bars. Although a 1934 decree signed by then-president Getula Vargas, which allowed psychopaths to be maintained indefinitely in psychiatric establishments for treatment, 
also because of crimes committed inside the prison, which increased his sentences for almost 400 years. Their stay in prison was extended by the justice until 2017. Petr had the freedom to remake his life with his girlfriend, a former prisoner whose name he did not reveal, whom he had met by exchanging letters. After serving 12 years of theft, the woman was released and visited Pedro in Tobate prison. According to fellow prisoners, Pedro is a phenomenon of survival in the harsh prison regime. As a prisoner could hardly survive that long, he killed and wounded dozens of fellow criminals in order to survive. Once, he was attacked by five prisoners, killing three of them and chasing away the other two. Pedro also killed a cellmate because he snored too much, and another because he did not like his face. Pedro killed at least 47 of his fellow inmates, which made up a majority of his murders. To leave no doubt about his willingness to kill, he tattooed on his left arm, I kill for pleasure, recently covered by another tattoo. Pedro could be described, according to psychiatrists, as a psychopath, someone with no remorse and no compassion for others. However, psychopaths do not develop affection there are chances that he was developing some for his mother and ex-girlfriend, describing him instead as a sociopath for wanting to avenage their debts. Psychiatrist who analyzed him in 1982 for an expert's report wrote that the greatest motivation of his life was the violent affirmation of oneself. They diagnosed him as a paranoid and antisocial character. After remaining in prison for 34 years, he was released on April 24, 2007. Intelligence information from the National Security Force indicated that he had moved to the northeast, more precisely to Fortaleza in Sierra. On September 15, 2011, local media reported that Pedro was arrested at his home in a rural area where he worked as a caretaker in Balnearia, Cambru, the Santa Catarina coast. According to news reports from the RBS News, he will have to serve eight years on charges such as riot and deprivation of liberty committed while he was detained in Sao Paulo. In present day, Pedro is at liberty after spending long years behind bars. He says he is sorry for his bad ways and that he had converted to Christianity and that he's writing an autobiography and that he has a YouTube channel where he gives advice to young people. He lives a completely different life and spends all of his time trying to get young people away from crime. That was quite intense. I often don't know what to say at the end of the video. I'm just like, wow, that was crazy. Wow, that was intense. Um, but no, let me know if you liked this story. What do you think about it? Do you feel sympathetic with Pedro? Do you not? Let me know. Also, I have recently went to see Pet Cemetery in cinemas and I freaking loved it. I'm not sure about the ending, like that's not really how I expected it to end, but still overall, honestly, like 9 out of 10, for sure. I'm not gonna go into that really because I don't want to spoil, but where was I going with that? Basically, get ready for the video about the lunch, about the lunch, about the legend of the Wendigo and how it is linked with Pet Cemetery and all that jazz. And until next time.